One of the most compelling things about literature and generally art is an embedded ability to break the fourth wall and cross the boundary between fiction and reality, a quality which often labels art as transcendent, or perhaps art attempts to convey implicit messages which makes it go beyond art itself. In a famous painting of a smoking pipe by the Belgian artist René Magritte, which carries the name The Treachery of Images, he attempts to convey a meta-message, separating the image of a thing from the thing itself, which is in this case a real pipe. He writes underneath the drawing of the pipe the words Sassini pas in pipe, French for this is not a pipe, it's merely the representation of a pipe. The very notion of a transcendent art is a magnet for film directors, video game creators and book authors which enables them to give authority to their art to escape the confined realm of fiction. Which brings me to metafiction, a word used to signify a fiction which draws attention to itself as imaginary. Oh! Oh, hello! In his endeavor to revolutionize the interactive element of the gaming experience, one of the most renowned video game creators of the present time, Hideo Kojima, could not resist the temptation to think outside of the box. With his first game what became one of the best franchises in video game history, in the first Metal Gear Solid game, players are asked by Colonel Campbell to find the detonation codes in order to stop a nuclear launch. He also said that Snake should contact Meryl by codec and that her frequency is written on the back of the CD case. In any case, you should contact Meryl by codec. Wasn't her frequency written on the back of the CD case? Vainly had players been trying to find the CD in the game, yet to their surprise, Colonel Campbell literally meant the back of the physical CD case the player owns. Another example of how Kojima breaks the fourth wall is when players are unable to beat a boss in the game unless they change the controller port. He even wanted to take the idea of removing the imaginary line between fiction and reality further in a game called Snatcher when he thought of putting hidden messages and blood odor on the disc and that they should be triggered by the heat of the computer. What's going on? I've become a junker. A junker? Gillian, but why? Jamie, you know why. It's the only way we can regain our lost memories. Many literary works self-consciously draw attention to their status as an artifact in order to pose questions about the relationship between fiction and reality. One of the examples is Slaughterhouse-Five, a science fiction anti-war novel by the American writer Kurt Vonnegut. Published in 1969, Slaughterhouse-Five is a perfect epitome of metafiction at its finest. The first chapter of the novel is reserved for the author, who plays part as a character in the novel, visiting an old military buddy for the sake of triggering his memory to write a book about the firebombing of Dresden. The author's character is not the protagonist, as the protagonist is the fictional Billy Pilgrim, a joke of a person who becomes unstuck in time after being taken in into the planet Tralfamador. The idea of being unstuck in time helped explore and examine the devastation that war can bring on a personal level, and the inclusion of the author as a character lends credibility to the narrative and the book's anti-war message. Metafiction is visible in the inclusion of a real character into a fictional setting, as the character's certainty of the fictionality of the work is apparent, as he very often repeats the phrase, so it goes. Metafiction is thus an experience of exploring worlds constructed entirely of language and mere fiction, as they become useful models for learning about the construction of reality itself. And therefore, the monopolization of the narcissistic narrative transforms the authorial process of shaping, of making, into part of the pleasure and challenge of reading as cooperative, interpretative experience, as breaking the fourth wall can also mean breaking with the conventions of storytelling.